Hello and welcome to Dialogue. Vietnamese leader Thu Lam has wrapped up his 3D visit to China, his first overseas tour since taking office earlier this month as General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam. During the visit, the two sides signed a joint declaration and more than a dozen cooperation documents. Why did Lam make China the destination for his first overseas visit? How will the visit further promote relationship between the two socialist neighbors? And what does the establishment of a China-Vietnam community with a shared future mean to both sides? Join us for our discussion today, live from Beijing. I'm Xu Qinduo. Joining me today are Rong Ying, Senior Research Fellow with the China Institute of International Studies. Win Tan Chuang, a faculty member of uh, international relations at Fulbright University of Vietnam, and V. V. Wei, country director at Design Sira and Associates Vietnam. Welcome to the show. Uh, so, Dr. Win, I will start with you. So, this is the first destination since Mr. Lem uh, uh, was elected uh, as the leader of the party in Vietnam earlier this month. Uh, so, China is the first destination. What does that mean? Why uh, did he choose China as his first uh, overseas visit uh, destination here? Um, I think that he wants to show to China and the world that China is the top priority uh, of his agenda. And China is the most important partner that Vietnam wants to maintain the relationship with. And um, by uh, coming to China in less than one month after taking office, uh, Mr. Tolam wants to uh, sustain the good relationship between China and Vietnam and want to show to, to China that China is very important to uh, the development of Vietnam. I mean, in terms of uh, economic development as well as uh, security, as well as prosperity uh, for Vietnam in the next uh, few years. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rung Ying, so what kind of a message do you think the Chinese side receives, uh, you know, uh, being uh, the first overseas destination of the new leader from Vietnam? Yeah, certainly I think I, they send I, I, a very strong... Yeah, Mr. Rung Ying, please. Yes. Okay. As I agree, fully agree with, uh, I mean, a co-panelist from uh, Vietnam that certainly uh, the visit and the choice uh, uh, itself send a very strong and a positive message. Not only I think the special sort of relationship, the unique relationship, but also I think in terms of the commitment that the new leadership, the top leadership of Vietnam, of uh, the party and the uh, state would like to carry forward uh, the uh, legacies left over by late uh, General Secretary uh, 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 Ran Futong, and also I think um, the readiness to work together with China uh, to further and deepening uh, that special uh, relationship, which has a long tradition. And uh, it is also equally important that that symbolism, that gesture has been positively reciprocated by the Chinese side. If you look at the protocol and, uh, and also the way that uh, uh, General Secretary and President uh, Tong Lam that was received in Beijing. And the last but not least, I would say that it has now more or less kind of become tradition. Chinese fully and fairly uh, remember that when the first visit that China received after the conclusion of the 20th Party Congress in 2022 was again uh, the uh, um, friends and uh, uh, guests from uh, Vietnam. That was, of course, the late General Secretary uh, Ram Phu Tong. So this is a very special relationship. This is a very unique relationship. That's a very important relationship. But the most important thing, this relationship is going to be carried forward, as we have seen by the just concluded visit by General Secretary and President To Lan. Mm -hmm. Well, along with this uh, political relationship, uh, which is long, which is a tradition, which is a, I mean, traditional and rich between the two countries, the two parties, um, Vivi Wei, you know, here, of course, 
uh, we know that uh, you know the priority or one of the priorities of the visit is about uh, uh, you know economic relationship, uh, and among that is um, I think if I'm not wrong, the two real lines uh, you know both inside Vietnam and also uh, the one probably connecting the two countries. Uh, tell us more in that respect, and how important is it? Uh, to say um, economic development of Vietnam and also bilateral trade relationship? Thank you. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Shri. Um, and thank you for having me here today for the discussion. Um, I think that's a very good question, given the significant trade and economic ties between China and Vietnam. The cross-border rail links definitely significantly contribute to the bilateral commercial exchanges and help Vietnam to build more modernized and integrated productions and supply chains. Um, firstly, Vietnam has quite huge advantage of abundant uh, opportunity in a trade, investment, and other economic activities. So those advantages can be enhanced by a better connectivity, right? So um, as a lot of people know, uh, China has been Vietnam's largest trading partner, uh, the largest import market, and also second largest export market. The Wellay link will definitely further facilitate the logistic trading, especially the cross-border uh, e-commerce between these two countries. Um, give you an example, a uh, virus large warehouse run by the Chinese enterprise has been built close to the border of Vietnam. And those kind of news already made headlines in Vietnam in the past several months. And this warehouse is expected to reduce the time and cost for delivering goods ordered online to Vietnam. And also the high speed rails are already included in the scope of China Vietnam rail uh, cooperation. Those modern transportation infrastructure are crucial to the regional connectivity and economic integration. Um, for instance, um, rail, rail transport is a less consuming uh, option and also less costly for deliver the produce with a short lifespan, for example, the fresh fruit. But currently, the sea freight is a typical means of the transport for many Vietnamese agricultural products to China. So it is not a viable option for fresh fruit in the shipping time uh, because the shipping time is longer than the produced shelf life, right? So with those high speed rail uh, would definitely help uh, to uh, strengthen the bilateral trade, uh, even onto an express uh, land in a certain level. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, a strong boost to trade between the two countries. Uh, uh, Dr. Wynn, of course, during uh, the uh, Vietnamese leader, uh, two lambs stay in Beijing, of course, both sides in their joint declaration, they talked about uh, further strengthening uh, their comprehensive strategic uh, cooperative partnership, as well as the building of a China-Vietnam community uh, with a shared future. Of course, you know, according to what uh, you know, Vivi has talked about, uh, you know, this connectivity with these uh, real links uh, inside Vietnam and between Vietnam and China. So th that's a vivid example of like a shared future, right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, in Vietnam, uh, we are talking a lot about uh, connectivity with China and we think that it's good for Vietnam's economy uh, in the coming years, because we are, we, already, we already know that China is a very big market for v Vietnam's products, and with the good connectivity to China, and Vietnamese farmers and peasants can export their products to China, and then it can help reduce the trade deficit between the two countries. And I think that with the shared future, and the two countries can aim for common prosperity or common peace together. And I think that is very practical in a sense that most countries can see that they can have something in common. They have the, the, the common goals and the common uh, targets to, to strive for. And that is not only in trade, but it's also in uh, connectivity and also in people-to-people uh, -people relations and also in uh, science and technology. And people from the, from the, from the two countries can see uh, can have 
can have more interactions with each other in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, a shared future between uh, the two countries and two peoples. Uh, Vivi, uh, picking up what you said about uh, you know, uh, transporting, say, you know, agricultural products from Vietnam to China, we know, uh, uh, you know according to, uh, based on the do uh, dozen about you know, cooperation documents, there are, you know, there's a mention of uh, crocodile, mention of a coconut, mention of uh, you know, a dew run <laughs> from Vietnam to China. So that's what we are expecting uh, with uh, a closer development between two countries? Yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, when uh, Tu Lam visit uh, President Xi on 19th August, uh, China and Vietnam already signed 14 documents uh, after the meeting in Beijing. The signed documents covers uh, various aspects, including uh, implementing the preliminary deals on the railway routes, cooperation between central banks, cooperation in media and health. And the last one is the quarantine and inspection of coconuts, crocodile, and durians. And I think um, for durians, it's quite famous uh, agricultural products in Vietnam. It's mainly sell to China because Chinese consumers are or uh, favors for the durian flavors, right? So um, in addition, those could be the foremost areas will receive greater emphasis. Uh, for both governments. And um, through our observation uh, in Vietnam, we also see the trends, for example, the green energy, renewable energy, digital, circular, and um, sharing economy also among the interests uh, shared by China and Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, Rong Yin, uh, of course, we know that uh, both China and Vietnam, if you look at their uh, political system, there's a similarity, a similarity in the ideals and beliefs, um, and, and, and of course, uh, two uh, socialist countries uh, and also neighbors. Um, um, you know, using, uh, you know, quoting uh, what the Chinese side would say, comrades and brothers, a friendship between the two countries. I mean, uh, that in a sense, a political sense probably, also uh, is, is basically the foundation of, say, building a community between the two countries with a shared future. Indeed, I think um, between China and Vietnam, uh, in addition uh, to a kind of a state-to-state -state relationship, as we have been discussing, the party uh, relationship between the two parties, the two communist parties, also carries a great significance. Not only in terms of the shared sort of ideology, shared aspiration to pursue uh, a kind of a, a goals uh, that uh, would uh, suit uh, their respective uh, 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 sort of conditions, but more importantly, I think the two communist parties, ruling being the ruling parties, share the same goal, same aspiration that the to. Uh, through their, I mean, their respective efforts and also, of course, joint efforts to ensure socialism. Socialism will be prevailing in countries like China and uh, Vietnam. This is also very much important in the context as socialism, socialist road, socialist model remains a kind of uh, in a low ebb or difficult uh, period, if uh, we are talking about the terms of neighbor, I mean numbers. But of course, the, the success of China and the success of Vietnam certainly means a lot. So this is again an area uh, uh, where I think the uh, vision sh uh, shared by the two countries, the two parties, to build a community with the shared future that carries strategic significance uh, is important in this context. Mm -hmm. uh, along with that, Lan, uh, Dr. Wim, you know, if you look at the trade between the two countries, uh, for example, the first seven months of this year, uh, the trade volume between the, two between the two sides increased by 21, some say 21, according to one figure, others say 25%. But in any sense, it's a strong growth. I mean, double digit growth, 20, more than 20%. If you compare that globally to other areas, I mean, in Europe or in the uh, other regions, that's very impressive. So um, if the momentum is being kept for the next half of this year, so we are going to see, uh, based on the calculation, 200 billion 
uh, bilateral trade volume at end of uh, 2024. I mean, that, that's really something because that's uh, almost a tantamount to uh, the trade between China and Russia. Uh, so, the, the, uh, can, can we say, I mean, the, the growth momentum remains very strong uh, between China and Vietnam there? Yeah. Uh, what we can see uh, is that China is so important to, uh, to uh, Vietnam's economy, and China is considered like the biggest momentum to, for maintaining Vietnam's economy growth. And you already know that uh, Vietnamese leaders are focusing on uh, maintaining good economic performance as a way to ensure uh, the improved livelihood of the Vietnamese people. And China is playing a big part in keeping that momentum as the engine for uh, the locomotive of Vietnam's economic growth. And uh, if we look at the bigger picture, and we can see that not every market uh, for Vietnamese products uh, is the same as what we can see uh, with the Chinese market. So. What I can say, what I can say is, is that uh, Vietnam is always considering China as the biggest momentum for Vietnam's economy for a long term, and especially uh, for the trade. And I expect that uh, if you look at the investment growth from China to Vietnam, and you can can also see a big increase in Chinese investments in Vietnam uh, in the last few years. Uh, it's not as big as the trade growth. But we can see also a big jump in Chinese investments into Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, Vivi, you know, of course, a lot of Chinese investment, um, they, they are seeing Vietnam as a, you know, the opportunity, land of opportunities, you know, to do investment. Uh, of course, partly because of the geopolitical reasons, they see, you know, like a real road team from Vietnam to the U.S. as mm -hmm. part of the consideration, too. Uh, but, uh, you know, even... If it, when it comes to the bilateral relationship, we say Duran, for example, 90% of them could be found consumers in, in China. So this is a large market. And of course, uh, Vietnam is gr economy is growing rapidly. Uh, tell us more about this bilateral trade here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we enter the bilateral trade uh, things like sharing, I also want to see like as a Chinese living in Vietnam, you know, the observations. And I have to say like it, it really goes both ways. As uh, Dr. Nguyen just mentioned, whatever Vietnam can supply to China is basically complement to what China can offer to Vietnam, right? So um, those significant trend economic ties between those two countries, um, not only on the uh, railway links, but we're also talking about uh, further topic uh, like, uh, you know, for example, the trade agreement Vietnam signed uh, with uh, China, uh, including the 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 FCT RECP and also ACFTA agreement. Those are important guidance for two countries to enhance and develop the further economic ties and also framework to benefits to each other's interest. Oh yeah, the the, the RCEP, of course, uh, you know, regional comprehensive yeah. you know trade partnership. You know, that includes ASEAN, ten ASEAN countries, China, you know, Japan, Korea. Uh, Australia, yeah. uh, New, New Zealand, of course, also the trade deal between China and, uh, and ASEAN. So that played also a role uh, by bringing the two countries to do, do yeah. I mean, to do more trade. What about the, the new frontier, for example, the green uh, energy and also, you know, digital economy, you know, where China is very strong at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also see the um, incoming like China energy uh, focused companies like they really interested in opportunity on energy and energy storage projects in Vietnam. Um, they even have called the Vietnamese government to uh, further implement the, the guidance for, uh, for example, streaming lines, the bidding procedures on the ways to energy projects, especially with those uh, state owned companies and also solutions to optimize the integration of uh, renewable energy projects and other industry. And the last part I want to chip in is BYD is here. And I think they will enlarge their uh, operation, expand more um, on top of the 
you know, BYD as a electric, uh, electric uh, vehicle manufacturer, uh, for example, Cherry and Yadi. Um, also, telecommunic, uh, telecom comes giants like uh, ZTE or Huawei mm -hmm. also show their strong interest in invest in Vietnam. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, further, I mean, more investment uh, um, in different um, from different uh, yeah. companies are expected. Uh, um, but uh, Rong Yim, if you if you look at the two countries, of course, we are not say saying that uh, you know they are immune from any problems or differences. For example, in the South China Sea, there's unresolved problems between two countries. Uh, but still, if you compare and how they handled uh, those differences uh, to and what happened between China and the Philippines. Uh, you see there's a quiet diplomacy, which has proven to be very effective uh, in playing down the differences, the problems, and focusing on the priorities, priorities of development, of growth, of stability, of a good neighborly relationship between the two countries. Uh, so tell us more about that. You know, what's, what is at play? What fact is at play that bring the two countries in uh, seeing so much I mean, common grounds um, in, sh you know, let's say, a limit of concern, the problem, focusing on the, uh, you know, what's, uh, what's, what's this uh, uh, forward looking and for the common prosperity there. Yeah, certainly I think, as you rightly said, that between China and Vietnam on the question of differences, particularly those related territorial disputes, maritime issues, I think there have been always kind of a quite, and I would say, effective diplomacy to manage, properly manage these differences so that they would not hinder or undermine the, uh, the cooperation that we are talking about. And this is, I think, very much important uh, because first and foremost, I think at the top level, at the political level, there's a shared understanding that given the importance and the prospects of the relationship, these issues should be handled and can be handled. And this is a kind of a political commitment. And this is a kind of political understanding. And importantly, because of the, the two parties, two communist parties, I think the, the understanding uh, and the consensus between the two parties also help uh, to strengthen that political uh, commitment, political sort of understanding. And secondly, I think there have been very serious efforts to uh, ensure that uh, the, the issue, the, these disputes would be managed in a, in a way that they would be not uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 complicate or disturb the, uh, the process uh, that we're talking about. Here I'm referring uh, to the principles, to the norms, and to the practice that has been going on uh, and that has been done by the two sides. Remember, this year marks the 25th anniversary of the conclusion, successful conclusion of the boundary issues on the land. And of course, uh, the land boundary between China and Vietnam, thanks uh, to the joint efforts, has been successfully uh, re uh, resolved. But we all know that the land boundary has, was equally so that as equal as complex and contentious as the maritime one. Mm -hmm. On the maritime disputes uh, related to South China Sea, uh, 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 I think, uh, again, in the past few years have seen that the two sides are working very closely to uh, by formulating some basic guiding principles along this line. And in the meantime, efforts have also been made to explore possible areas or possible ways for cooperation. Because this is, again, a shared belief that while differences and disputes may not be resolved overnight, cooperation, practical cooperation, wherever possible, will help build up trust to see, to, 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 to trust, to prepare or to help uh, manage, effectively manage or mm. handling the disputes. Yes. And last but not least, I think the two sides agree that uh, the laws and norms 
uh, 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 like, uh, like uh, DOC, uh, uh, ASEAN, and also Anklos should also be followed through. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Dr. Nguyen, of course, uh, uh, you know, I, I talked about in the Philippines, the Vietnam, you know, uh, uh, very different, uh, in a very different way, handling the differences with, with China on the South China Sea. Um, you know, some would say, you know, in the Philippines, of course, you have like military bases from the U.S., heavy influence of the U.S., but Vietnam is pursuing a kind of a very independent foreign policy. People call it bamboo policy, uh, foreign policy, uh, basically diversifying and uh, multi Lateralizing its relationship with the big powers, uh, you know, major powers, China, Russia, U.S., Japan, you know, uh, you name it, India here, uh, with, you know, to pursue a balance. I mean, so far it has worked very well. And, but, but still, I, I'm wondering, like, you know, given this aggressiveness, let's be frank, you know, there's an aggressive, um, I mean, policy uh, pursuing from Washington toward China, whatever you call it, the new Cold War, containment of China. Is there any pressure from Washington you know, to bring Vietnam on, on, on side, on board against China? Um, I think that there may be some implicit pressure from Washington to pressure Hanoi uh, to take side with them. But I think that the Vietnamese leaders are very adamant and very determined to follow the bamboo diplomacy because they have learned so many lessons in the past that to have the ind ind independent policy and to balance between red powers is good for, for, for us as a small and medium power in the region. And, and we, we, we don't want to be, uh, you know, sitting on one side of the fence. We, we would rather sit, sit, on, uh, sit on the fence, right? And it's some kind of the hedging strategy that the Vietnamese leaders are unanimous in uh, following it and what we call it like the bamboo diplomacy, yeah. And we, we, we try to be flexible and we don't want to displease any red powers. And that's what we, we want to pursue. Uh, even though as what we can say that when uh, General Secretary and President Tolam chose China as the, the first destination, so it means that China is always at the top of his agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, as you said, uh, the fact that the uh, you know, first uh, overseas destination uh, for Mr. Tolam's uh, visit is in China, I mean, such a fact itself is uh, a proof of a continuity of this um, foreign policy from Vietnam? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, Rong Yim, uh, here, I mean, being independent, I mean, being for the national interests of Vietnam here, I mean, there's nothing wrong. Probably every country should do that. I mean, every country should be encouraged to do so, to be independent and to work for their own national interests. Uh, so that's the way it should go because, um, you know, uh, big differences, competition between major powers, big powers will only hurt, uh, you know, to, to, in a serious manner, could, could hurt peace and stability in this region, uh, not to mention the development there. Sure, I think uh, the uh, key to the success of that bamboo diplomacy, which is a very, I think, vivid uh, explanation of a kind of a uh, diplomacy pursued by a country like uh, Vietnam, is independence, strategic independence. Because as a sort of a one that grew up in an area in China where there are many bamboos, we understand that despite the shaking or wavering of the, the bamboo, the most important thing, you got the root deeply, deeply, I think, based on the ground. So that base, that base is the, the uh, sort of uh, interest, the interest of a particular country like Vietnam, which is Important not mm -hmm. only in terms of yes. its, uh, in, in the region, but more importantly, I think the, the, the experience and history yes. of the past. So, yes. ample diplomacy. Well, we have important. to stop there. With that, we are coming to the end of today's show. Many thanks to our guests. You can also watch us on the CGTN app on YouTube. I'm Xu Qinduo. Thanks for being with us. See you next time. <laughs>